We're now on the June 2010 exam, page 10, probably get to page 11 as well. We're on question 46. Which graph best represents the relationship between the power exerted by a resistor that obeys Ohm's law and the potential difference applied to the resistance? So they want to know the power exerted and the potential difference, which is voltage, applied to a resistor. So the relationship between power, voltage, and resistance. And we can see that the relationship between power, voltage, and resistance is power equals V squared over R. Power equals V squared over R. So you could uh, plug in some numbers. Uh, power is 1 over 1. 1 squared over 1 is 1. Power is 2 squared over 1, which would be 4. Power is 3 squared over 1, which is 9. So as the voltage increases, the power increases exponentially. And that's going to be graph number 4. Voltage increases, power increases with the square of voltage. The distance between an electron and a proton is varied. Which pair of graphs best represents the relationship between gravitational force and distance and the relationship between electrostatic force and distance? All right, well, when I've got to choose two, I try to uh, narrow it down to one. So gravitational force... The formula for gravitational force is G is m1, m2 over r squared. <clears throat> force of gravity is G, m1, m2 over r squared. Well, m1 and m2 and G are all going to be constants, so what happens to force as the distance increases? So force of gravity is equal to, I'm just going to make up numbers, 1 times 1 times 1, over 1 squared. Force is 1. Oh, 1 over 2 squared. Force is a fourth. Over uh, 3 squared. It's a ninth. So as my distance gets bigger, my force decreases exponentially. So that eliminates choice four. As the force of gravity gets bigger as you get further apart, that's not true. And it eliminates choice three. So I've got one and two to pick from. So now let's look at the force of electricity. So let's look at the force of electricity as a function of two static charges and the distance. And we say the force of electrostatics is equal to kq1, q2 over r squared. Again, k is a constant, the charge of the electron, charge of the proton. You can look these up, but uh, we're just looking for proportionality, so we can substitute in any number we want. We can say the force of electricity is equal to 1 times 1 times 1 divided by 1 squared, or 1. So it's uh, 1 over 2 squared, or a fourth. 1 over 3 squared, or a ninth. Uh, we got the exact same graph for electrostatic force. So we're looking for uh, choice 1 is going to be the correct answer. Now keep in mind, force of gravity incredibly smaller than the force of electricity. But the ratio to distance is uh, the same kind of ratio. Question 48. The diagram below represents a periodic wave traveling through a medium. If the frequency is 2 hertz, what's the speed of the wave? Frequency is 2 hertz. And in this, they're uh, trying to see if you can uh, look at the diagram and determine a wavelength. Well, in 6 meters, I've got 1 and a half waves. So 6 meters and 1.5 waves, and I divide, and find that uh, the wavelength is 4 meters per wave. 
So I've got frequency of uh, 2 hertz, a wavelength of 4 meters per wave. And the speed of a wave, the velocity of a wave, is equal to velocity equals frequency times wavelength. Velocity equals frequency times wavelength, or 2 hertz times 4 meters per wave. Incidentally, 2 hertz is 2 waves per second. Uh, waves cancel out. We're left with 8 meters per second. And that would be uh, choice 3 is 8 meters per second. We're on to page 11, question 49. The diagram below represents a light wave reflecting from a plane mirror. So here we are, and we want to know the angle of reflection for the light ray is. Don't take anything for granted on these problems. Uh, here's the incident ray, here's the reflected ray. To measure the angle, you always measure from a normal. So at the point where it hits the mirror, you draw a perpendicular. And then you measure the angle of reflection, and it would be this angle right here. And always extend your rays. And I'm looking at 25 degrees. So the angle of reflection is 25 degrees. Now if the geometry is right, this should also be 25 degrees. But on one of the exams, they drew uh, an angle of incidence and a different angle of reflection. They were getting at, can you measure the angle of reflection? Do you know that this is the angle of reflection? And, but in order to do it, they had bad physics. At any rate, the correct answer to this question would be 25 degrees, and we find that in choice 1, 25 degrees. And finally, question 50. The diagram below shows a standing wave in a string clamped on each end. The total number of nodes and antinodes in the standing wave. Well, the nodes are these points of no movement. When you did this lab, this is where your hand would have been, and these were the places that weren't moving. So I've got one, two, three, four, and five nodes. And the places of maximum deflection are the antinodes. So I've got one, two, three, four antinodes. So five nodes and four antinodes. And here we are, option three, five nodes, four antinodes. Pages 10 and 11 are now done.